Hey everyone, so before we get into the video that Hunter and I recorded, I feel like it's important to say a couple things about this. So Hunter and I recorded yesterday around, I think, four o'clock. Um, so this was before it looks like, judging by the timestamps, any of this was posted. So yesterday was Saturday the 14th at around four o'clock. So we made our video talking about the Genlock situation in Grey totally independently of this post. It was our own independent thoughts and speculation, whatever you want to call it, right? And so now seeing this, right, as I'm getting home from work, today is Sunday the 15th, like that's the first thing, right? Our thoughts were not influenced by this post. That's number one. Number two, now that I've seen this post, right, obviously take it with a grain of salt. I don't know what they did to vet this RT source. Like, I don't know if this is true or if this is like totally bullshit, but I do think that it's kind of, I don't want to say interesting, but it's just sort of interesting that, because this is basically, if you watch the video, what I was trying to get at. Like, I didn't want to say it necessarily in this way or so outright, because, like, I didn't want to, you know, make too many assumptions. Like, allegedly, supposedly, possibly, uh, so we don't get sued. But I was just sort of like, it's possible that Gray was a shitty director as this thing said like that he was bad at his job and mismanaged people and that caused the crunch which got him like demoted basically from the head of animation um and then the genlock stuff sort of fell apart along the way like I talk about that in this video independently of this post so you do, do you guys understand what I'm saying it's just I don't know like obviously I don't know if you guys can tell but this has obviously upset me and so it's just sort of I don't want to say freaky but it's just sort of freaky that like yesterday when we were doing this video I said something very similar and speculated on something very similar um independently of this post and now this post comes out and it's exactly like almost not exactly exactly because like how would I know about a champagne toast right but it's basically exactly what my fears were if that makes sense and exactly what in my sort of mind I was speculating on um what happened and um so yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. Again, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's true, but it's just sort of, again, it's just sort of freaky that I sort of like thought that something like this may have occurred and I talk about that um, sort of in this video and now we have this post that lines up. Like it could be just a coincidence. Okay, I'm not just gonna be like, well, this may be right because it reinforces my own opinion from yesterday. But no, like it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird like reading it it's almost like okay well I thought this yesterday by myself and now my sort of worst fears are all in this post so yeah just keep that in mind that we recorded this video without this post all of our thoughts are independent at this post and now that I'm seeing this post it doesn't necessarily what like change what I like what I think and what I said um, you know what I mean? But obviously, like, seeing this now, like, this is upsetting. But anyway, I'm just gonna, um, we're gonna get into the actual video that Hunter and I recorded yesterday now. Hello, everyone! It is Kalaxon and Hunter here. If you feel more informed after watching this video, you guys should become patrons over on Patreon. Subscribe! Follow me on social media. We're gonna be out of a job soon, so we better just cover these things while we still can. Okay, remember when we were like, hey guys, everything is okay. Everything. Don't panic. Everything's fine. All. Don't Long worry. Day. That was our video on like Thursday. It's Saturday. <laughs> yesterday, as of yesterday, things are no longer fine. They are no longer okay. And that is why we are all here. Okay? This is it's a not slightly it's not okay. Tone. Um it's a it's, it's, it's alarming though. It is alarming. It was very alarming it's yesterday. Post, okay. So Gray was tweeting, all right? He was tweeting about just like the regular like, oh guys, if you've been laid off, don't worry, you're great, your artistic talent will help you find a job. He didn't say that, but that's like the sentiment the of his tweets is like, you're gonna be okay, I will help you network. Like that was his sort of like, you know what I mean? Just very, very like normal tweets, okay? But then things got 
unnormal, and he said, given some inquiries, I feel like I ought to relay I parted ways with Rooster Teeth recently. We left the door open to the possibility of my doing creative work for them down the road. Meanwhile, I'm off to pursue new projects and will keep you posted. I wish everyone in RT and, and, and Amy, animation. so animation, yeah. the best. And so... Bitch. Okay, so we have to talk about so, a couple things. Roman All right, Gray. Not coming back. Gray was no, no, no. Hold on. Let's try to go in order, okay? Gray was basically like I don't want to say he was demoted, but he was no longer the head of animation. Yeah. Right. That happened in June in response to the crunch, and this is sort of making me think like Gray is the head of animation, right? Yeah. Like, he would have been, I guess, managing all these things. Yeah. And so part of the crunch and people's complaints were mismanagement. And so it's like, we shouldn't make assumptions, right? I'm not going to be like, oh, Gray mismanaged all these people. But at the same time, like, if that was his job and he was let go in response, like, almost in response to the crunch thing, or maybe it was pre-planned and they just added it. Because I think they said, we were planning to do this from the beginning. And I'm like, but were you, though? And so my thing is, it's like, it just didn't look good after they said that part. And then this doesn't look any better. Do you understand what I mean? I'm not trying to be like, oh, guys, don't worry. Now that Gray's gone, everything will be okay. But at the same time, I'm like, um, and now I'm even more like, um, because no, it's not going to be okay. Because it was okay if they got somebody else into his role that maybe managed the animation team properly. If that's what he was doing. Listen, well, I don't know. Well, that is what they said, that he was helping someone. Uh, he was helping Rooster Teeth pick and presumably train his replacement as yeah i guess so and then animation. you know it's sort of fine for him to still be around because he can work on genlock so we were like oh this is actually a good thing he can focus on genlock no he's not gonna focus on genlock he's, because he's leaving okay yes. so here's the thing okay i don't want to make anyone freak out but when the nomad of nowhere creator left look at where nomad of nowhere ended up no talk about it whatsoever they're pretending like it does not exist okay and people are like well cal you know genlock is different they have michael b jordan and yeah. all these famous people involved they put a lot more stock like stock in it yes. compared to nomad which i think is a good point and like they but like with nomad gone. we said the same thing we were like oh other writers can take over the story's not like so like big galaxy brain complicated that only one man like this isn't kingdom hearts okay this isn't like oh if tetsu and namora is dead who knows like how we can continue this story type thing you know what i'm saying like with nomad we were like somebody could easily pick it up and write for it but that didn't happen and so well, now it's sort of like with genlock i don't i don't know I just don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know if the show did what they were expecting. I don't know if it did less what they were expecting. I don't know if it did better. I don't know if they're like, okay, well, this isn't worth our time anymore. We should just move on to somewhere else. We should focus on Ruby because that's what they're doing. And that's what they sort of talked about at RTX is really like streamlining Ruby and focusing on Ruby and sort of all that other stuff. Right. And so it's like maybe one day we'll return to the world of Genlock, but. Mm, like it's just not looking good sis okay and there's a possibility but he's like i'm moving on to new projects okay that doesn't mean i'm gonna come back to work on genlock but in the meantime i'll work on some new projects okay he just straight up was like all right well i'm gonna go work on some new stuff but now. he also said i will open the door for like other creative, creative in depth but everyone like everyone says that because nobody wants to burn bridges he doesn't want to be like well fuck rooster teeth i'm leaving right that's not a good look but also other creative endeavors could just be the characters that he voices, a.k.a. Roman Torchwick, yeah. for example, or RVB? For Ruby. Mm, RVB? I don't, I don't know, know about... I don't know about RVB. I don't know anything about RVB, okay? But yeah, like, for Ruby Chibi, Roman is in Ruby Chibi a lot, and so it sort of rings me as, don't worry, guys, I'll still, like, come in and voice characters if you need me, but... <laughs> okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he's not, like, the only other character that he has that's still, like, a living character in a Rooster Teeth property is Roman Torchwick and Ruby Chibi, and Ruby Chibi's history, or future, is dubious. Yeah, Ruby Chibi's on hiatus to focus on Ruby. And yeah. here's the thing, right? We said this in my video. I think it's good for Rooster Teeth to 
not focus on other things and just focus on because I said this and I made a Twitter thread just about our personal experience it is best to sort of be 80 to 90 percent okay with things before you go on and start new things and I get that they're a company so they will probably expand faster but like in my opinion they probably should have waited till Ruby was like 80 to 90 percent good before starting Genlock. And I mean, like, in terms of where they were comfortable with this is the writing we want to do, this is the animation, right? They changed the animation, so clearly in recent, you know, they didn't get to that format until right now, until volume six or volume five, I would say. They finally sort of got their bearings, especially volume six wise. That's just my opinion, okay? And so I feel like by putting too much on your plate, so early that is just going to be naturally harmful and we've done that before where instead of being 90 percent comfortable with some of the stuff we're doing we're trying to do 13 anime at the exact same time like that and that's our personal thing we're not a company right but that was just sort of my opinion and so if they do stop genlock like good focus on ruby i don't know if they should focus on rvb anymore to be honest like if it's still making money i guess go ahead but you know after 13 seasons you kind of have to wonder where the quality starts well, to come from 16 seasons now 16 Our... seasons you'd kind of have to wonder you just kind of you just kind of have to wonder okay and i haven't watched rvb so like don't come for me I um, think 13 was the last time it was like poignant and so but, maybe yeah. that's why i remember 13 um but yeah and so that's just sort of the thing so on one hand this is a good thing right focus on ruby regain your bearings lick your wounds sort of thing if you want to call it that on the other hand okay i feel as a fan personally cheated i feel out bamboozled of, i feel tricked out of genla you know what i mean and i i don't usually have that attitude right and you guys know that i don't usually have that attitude with things because that's a type of entitlement that i don't really want to be like as a fan or as a person but at the same time I feel attacked. Like, I just feel cheated. Because you were invested in a show. Yeah, because I was invested. And then they they acted like the future was set. You have Michael B. Jordan. You got David Tennant. Your future should be set. How can you fuck this up? You know what I mean? they thought that their future was solid. And so I... They genuinely believed I know. I know they did. Maybe. And maybe it still is okay. We haven't And we'll get to this after. Yeah. Um, but the thing is about Grey leaving, I guess, is it's just like, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere. They didn't mention, like, he didn't come to RTX. And we were all like, oh, okay, he's just not at RTX. Like, they didn't, I don't know. I feel like they knew this for a lot longer than they were going to tell the public, if that makes sense. I feel like as soon as he was removed from the animation department head or whatever he was, that's when he left in June, okay? And nobody told us. It is September, sis, all right? And I, again, in the last video, I'm like, I find it weird when everybody wants to know the inner workings of a business, right? I said that. That was me, okay? But there's a difference between like, oh, you know, we have 13% of our staff in this area and this area and that, you know what I mean? Like giving us the numbers and being like, oh yeah, by the way, this person who is sort of like an RT personality as well, like they don't only do yeah. stuff, people also know him. Uh, he left four months ago and we didn't tell you funny how that happens and, and i'm just like real quiet about it because maybe if they knew people would panic about maybe genlock not being not coming back but that, which th is the accurate. panic should have been at because rtx though because we went to rtx and what did we see we saw no new stuff we saw old concepts right so at rtx in the genlock panel we heard that it was going to be on toonami we saw old concepts of how they developed the art style for the show and that was basically it and they and were like, was... we'd love to do a season two. Okay, and so I'm just, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I can, just don't know. Can I, can I be positive for two no, seconds? No, because I'm not done being negative yet. Okay. okay, Hunter will get to the positive part after. Because there is a, a shining beacon, if you will. There is a shining gem here in this pile Wait, of shit. Get you negative okay. Because I think you're being All of the merch? Making all of the merch? And listen, I feel, listen, I feel so like because angry. you spent just because you made the poor financial decision of buying five hundred dollars worth of Genlock merch. Okay, it wasn't. Is, is it not, wasn't that is much, but it was Teeth enough. Fault. It was enough. That is your. It was fault. enough. I'm just saying that if they knew, I don't know. It. I don't know. I feel like that. Like Nirvana is making should... <laughs> new albums. People still buy their I shirts. I know, but I'm saying that I don't want to say that I feel cheated, but at the same time, I'm like. 
there was merch for this thing, and there was the illusion that this thing would continue, and now it's not. But and it, for me, it's not hold on, canceled. hold on. Neither is X Ray and Val, but like, okay, I'm just saying. Okay, okay, but it's only been a couple months. I know, I know. I'm just saying. I think it's a little. I don't want to say scummy, but it's a little. It's a little weird. Like, definitely a little like. How I don't long know. have you been in a nerd production hold on, company hold on, hold being on. like, oh, we don't know if we can do another one? That's of these. not it. There's and something a little. I feel. I feel a little like just in like it's a little disingenuous to make all this Genlock merch and then like people buy it because they want to support season two of the show and they want to show, hey, Rooster Teeth, this stuff sells. Keep making this, and then we all just got fucked. Like, you know what I mean? And there was, like, exclusive stuff at RTX and, like, stuff like that. And, so you can buy merch And Nomad of Nowhere is different because there's, like, four Nomad of Nowhere shirts. That's fine. But there's, like, lists of all these Genlock fucking shirts that they made. And I feel like that, and I'm sorry, like, I don't like to get into conspiracy theories or anything like that. But they made all this merch, and they made the most basic-ass shit where you just have some design, like, in the corner. Like, not like this shirt where there's, like, colors and stuff. This basic-ass genlock symbol. Some people uh, like it being basic in minimal. Anyway, I did a whole video about that. But anyway, these, like, basic-ass shirts just to get money out of people before the show got canceled. Okay? Because even though it's not canceled yet, all right? But I'm just saying, why would people buy, like, a group of people are not going to buy the merch if the show is canceled. Like, those are just facts. And so I feel like they purposely withhold that information to get the money from people like me that won't buy the merch if the show has been canceled, if that makes sense. That's just my feelings. And I, people are like, do you really regret it though, Cal? Like, do you not like what you bought? And I'm like, no, I like what I bought, but I could have spent that on a million other things that didn't disappoint me and, and hurt me. Like, I buy clothes for sentimental reasons. If you guys have noticed, I don't have a single fucking piece of normal teenage girl clothing. It is all like anime merch and like novelty clothes. And the reason is I hate clothes and I talked about that on Twitter. That's another story. But for me, I care about the sentimental value. Like, this is a Kingdom Hearts shirt. I love Kingdom Hearts. I played Kingdom Hearts you with my have, dad during Christmas when I was seven. in your breast pocket, which is, like, super weird, because I imagine your body heat would just melt it, and, like, the water would Well, that's be... what all this blue is. It's just oh, a yeah, popsicle. It's just, yeah, uh, but, yeah, and so, yeah, you know, there's yeah, something sure. here that I'm, like, Kingdom Hearts, like, makes me happy. I'm going to wear the shirt that makes me happy. But you know what? Now I look at a Genlock shirt, and I'm just, like, going to cry Didn't and be upset. Buy like a triple XL Genlock hoodie? Yeah, well, that was an accident. Somebody stuck it in the small section, and so I bought it. I'm going to wear it as a dress, and that's going to be our, our morning hoodie. I'll take that hoodie. up. I, yeah. It's XXX. I kind of want to see okay. what it looks like on me. It's I'm not going to lie. X3, and Ooh. I'm just like, I've never yeah. even seen an X3 person. I don't know. You can hide in that. I mean, I, yeah. I you have, can. but I've also been on a cruise ship. So. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, so my point is, is that the merch stuff just, dr like, grinds my gears a little bit, because they were making all this stuff and releasing all this stuff, and I feel like they and give the illusion up. that, oh, season two's gonna be here, buy some merch, support the show, okay, no, you guys knew from the be as soon as Grey left, they probably it knew that things with Genlock weren't gonna okay. go so well, alright? So In can I be June. positive now, because I have counterpoints to these. Sure. Oh, but here's... M um, what, one more thing I'm gonna add is, if you guys are confused, right, in July they had exclusive Genlock merch at the Coop, and the Coop merch is exclusive, and so it's more expensive. So, in June, when Gray was removed from his position, they would have known in time for uh, Genlock, and I'm not trying to say that they shouldn't have sold it at RTX, I'm just saying that they did sell it at RTX, they probably did it before they even know, like, he was not gonna be around anymore. I'm just saying that I find that interesting, that all this $100 chase hoodie came out during RT at like $150 exclusive chase hoodie that I got in an extra 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 large but they must have known already okay that just rubs me the wrong way I'm not trying to say oh Rooster Teeth's evil for doing that but no it just rubs me the wrong way as a consumer okay Hunter you can be positive now I guess if you have to so they have I, I my thing is like well they're Rooster Teeth is in a bit of a tizzle right now, arguably, you could say. Maybe Genlock didn't... I think that their issue and is... And I that, want them to succeed, so I still have a job. Yes. So Because know. I like their content. That's why I'm not also, trying to shit on I them. I like doing this with you. But it's it's the idea... I think one of their major issues is, is that they're a production company. They make shows, but they also want to be a, a platform 
You know, they want to be a platform like Netflix that you pay for. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But they also want to be something like, that what the makes fuck shows is Hunter talking about? that makes yeah. shows like for a platform like hypothetically like country, yeah. country roller like Toonami. and like and Netflix if, makes Netflix originals, yeah. but not all Netflix shows are Netflix but originals. But Netflix isn't right? Netflix like isn't a production company. Yeah, like they have smaller production companies that make shows like yeah, Stranger yeah, yeah. Things or She-Ra or whatever the case. Yeah, they may just be financiers. I feel like maybe the idea that Rooster Teeth is both of them makes like a high risk, high reward. Because if you have something like Ruby that was incredibly successful and has a, like a very devoted, obviously, look at us, audience, then you can then you can have a lot of success that a lot of people will pay for first memberships to watch it on your program. However, when it doesn't quite work out, it and, really and, doesn't, and people aren't gonna go and watch Gen Lock. Uh, then it, it really fails because you have this product that people aren't buying and, and you've locked it in a sort of yeah. uh, your own streaming service. That and the other thing was in. Genlock was like first exclu- like on the yeah. website. And, you, and can't, you can't watch it even now. And like listen, like with Ruby it's different because Ruby's on YouTube. It, it used to It be. sucks you in and then yeah. you can go to the website if you want to find more sort of thing. But, like, Ruby Volume 6 is going to be put on YouTube during Ruby Volume 7, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so, it's sort of one of those things where casual Ruby fans will just be like, oh, it's that show I used to watch three years ago. And then, like, you know, regular Ruby fans probably have already watched it and they're off watching Volume 7. But Genlock has basically none of that. Like, the trailers were on YouTube. I think the first episode was also on... mm, I don't remember. First episode may and have been, but probably wasn't. Hype, or maybe it was just me, but I felt like there was a lot of outside of Rooster Teeth's orbit, like Variety and Vulture and yeah. all these different things had art- articles about it because Michael And then B. you Jordan have, really you know, awesome. Alex Myers, like, yeah. doing, oh, what is this weird thing called Genlock? You have Let Me Explain doing, like, what the fuck is Genlock and all these other YouTube channels. Like, they didn't do that for Ruby. Nobody's paying us. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I'm just like... I don't know. I feel like something just went wrong. So I think here. the trouble may come from there, but there's certain things that I don't think are as troubling. Like, for one thing, we have the Genlock DC comics. Yes, and I did want here. to talk about that. And that's um, new Genlock material. So at least they're still interested in producing more stuff. But that here's the thing: I mean, like Tanami, that deal was probably made before Gray left. Yes, I would argue. Maybe and so that's a little different, in my opinion. Just because if something was announced for Genlock now, then I would be like, okay, like that's sort of interesting. Or even like if something gets announced for Genlock in December, let's just say, right? And like Gray has been gone for a couple of months, like that means like it would take a couple of months to sign that deal, whatever deal that is. Uh, and so I'm just sort of like, like it probably happened before with how long these things take. And they also could have, it could have been a case of, hey, DC, do you want Ruby? Well, if you want Ruby, you're going to have to make one about Genlog, right? Like that could have been how they uh, negotiated. And we don't know. I'm just saying that I can see it going that way where DC was interested in Ruby. And then they were just like, okay, fine. We'll take your stupid fucking shit. <laughs> like just to but, get it more exposure. But right? It's also really good. And it has names like David Tennant and... I don't know Maisie if that Williams was enough to carry it, though, is I, the problem, that's the Hunter. Thing, though. I don't know if that was enough to carry the burden. And here's the other thing. Like, Michael B. Jordan and Maisie Williams were all hot. Like, they're still hot. Okay. They're still, yeah, they're still hot. hot. Uh, like, they're still hot, like, back then. But it's like Game of Thrones is over, and that's what Maisie Williams was in. And so it worked when Genlock was premiering. But now what about in the future? Where is she going to go and what is she going to do? Michael B. Jordan, it's sort of like he was he for a film at the Toronto Film yeah. Festival, but I don't know, like I don't know his his role well. of in like a necessary like a Marvel sort of situation. He's going back to for Black Panther two. He's on the docket. So that's and good so for that's him. good. I don't know if it's um, good for Rooster Teeth. Here's my I don't know. Like here's my opinion. I guess maybe they could sell Jim Locke away to someone else. Well. I, like, you know what I mean? Like, so somebody else could be the distributor? So they stop being a platform and are just a production company. 
Yes. I think. Yeah, so mm-hmm. sort of, I guess, like, still have the Rooster Teeth website and okay. post stuff on your website. I'm just yeah. saying, like, Netflix may be like, hmm, we'll pay you a, well, a like, mighty sum to have Genlock be a... Red versus Blue is still on Netflix. <laughs> on net- Ruby yeah. still used to be on Netflix. Ne- uh, Ruby's on Amazon Prime oh. and all that stuff. And so I'm sort of like... Can't you just? Like I don't know. Deal? Like it's like Shira, right? Like Shira is yeah. not like and she was a Netflix original, mm-hmm. but those people didn't. You understand what I'm saying? Or even miraculously, I, I don't understand. No, anything. like Shira is a Netflix original, yeah. but Netflix doesn't have their own animation studio where yeah, they made true. Shira. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And so, like Rooster, maybe instead of being on the Rooster Teeth site, Genlock moves to Netflix for a while, and then Netflix funds the creation of Genlock. I don't know if that's something they can do. I don't know if that's something that's even to have, possible. Like, first be more deal. In the future, it's just like I don't know. The second they stopped posting stuff on YouTube, I think it became an issue for them. Yeah, I agree. And so here's the other thing with that. I think that's a mistake. But also, and I like, say you can't that, blame like, them because I can't blame them because YouTube screwed them over and really fucked mm. them hard. But at the same time, <laughs> language not count. like that, but, you know, YouTube has YouTube memberships now, and you could set yeah. the price. And so maybe something that Rooster Teeth should look into if they got into a 20-minute video of us complaining <laughs> is that you can set the tier price on YouTube and have it be early access on YouTube. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, like, what if instead of the Rooster Teeth site, they just had their stuff for early? Because really, it's early and exclusive access. You can do that on YouTube with the YouTube channel memberships. I don't know how many people know about YouTube channel memberships, but I'm going to make the argument that it would be easier to get people to subscribe to the YouTube channel memberships than it would be to convince them to go on the Rooster Teeth site in some cases. I'm not going to say that across the board. I'm just going to say that as a general thing, if you're staying on the same platform instead of leaving to another site, I think you'll always have a better yeah. chance to but a certain they also extent. want to be a platform well they themselves. should stop okay just pick something but then th- that, that I might think, collapse their business i don't model. know i guess if youtube dies that would be a problem but at the same that would be a problem, <laughs> that would for, a be a problem for a lot of people what are we gonna go on blip vimeo <laughs> tiktok come now <laughs> god but you understand what I'm saying? Maybe if they use the YouTube membership stuff to do their early access, because that's really what it's for. Maybe that would go better for them. I don't know. Like I don't have the I don't have the answers. I don't. Think I don't know if way. first membership would be more valuable than just setting your YouTube membership price to ten dollars, because YouTube does take a cut. But at the same time, you're it's like, you know what I mean? You'd have to make a graph of like the cut compared to. Your, your actual gr- like if there's enough people that do it like with the cut compared to with the cut with the YouTube cut compared to people going on your website then it would be more valuable you know like one of those mm-hmm. one of those graphs anyway one last thing I'll say is that the DC comics is hopeful but I feel like DC somehow got roped into doing it just because I think you're overly <laughs> negative because also I feel like they can still well make- they disillusioned me Hunter that's what I'm saying it's like you hear about people that they used disillusioned to disillusioned me honey you, you bought some t-shirts you didn't like I'm just they didn't like I'm come not- into your house like kill your mother and steal your dog I'm, like this isn't your villain I'm origin story I'm not saying that I'm just saying like you hear sometimes about those people that used to be a fa- like fans of Ruby and then they get like super bitter about the show and you just wonder how they sort of fell from grace and I'm like is that gonna be me am I just gonna hate like end up hating Rooster Teeth after everything that has has been I feel like you're being I feel overly a little, negative I feel a little bitter right you now you feel like you're being not unjustifiably negative I don't think it's unjustifiable I think the the crunch, the layoffs, and now great, like it's just situations adding things on each other. Okay, I was positive on Thursday. All right, what changed between <laughs> two days? I think that's that, what well, I'm trying to get at. Right, Monty Ohm had also passed away. But and that's Ruby different. Continued. They didn't drive him away. What if they drove Gray away? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's a little different. Like, Monty would have, like, yeah. stuck with Rooster Teeth, probably. You know what I'm saying? Like, after he got his surgery or whatever he was going to go in for in that day. In the alternative day. And in the timeline. alternative timeline, Gray was either driven away or he was let go because of but the, reasons. But regardless, so. they still... But that's just... That's, let, that's more of, like, a quality statement on Rooster Teeth as a company. What I'm saying is that as the ability to make a product, they could probably still make Genlock.
I hope. I mean, he but was I like the sole writer of it, I suspect, so. Well, Miles wrote some Nomad of Nowhere episodes, and I think they were all right. So, like, you just, like, similar to Nomad, you'd give it, I don't want to say give it away, but you know what I mean. But at the same time, when the actual creator isn't there, it's just a little, just a little off. Just a little awkward. I guess my last thing is that I was, I saw a Twitter thread that a non-binary person had left on, I guess, Dre's post, and they were saying that, I guess, Val, as a non-binary character, helped them, I guess, realize their identity. Yeah, I saw that. And so, to that I say, like, even if Genlock doesn't happen anymore, it did happen, and I still find value in that. Here's, I guess, here's my overly, here's my overly cynical take, okay? We can't make money off of Genlock anymore unless we make videos on how it's died. Okay, that's the only thing people are going to watch. We had LGBT analysis for Val that we were going to do. We had character analysis that we were going to do. We had shipping videos that we're going to do. We can't do that anymore. And I'm not trying to be like, wow, Rooster Teeth, like, put me out of a job, like, and be cranky about that. But I'm saying that Genlock, to me, no longer has any value because I cannot grab anything from it and use it for this YouTube channel. And I don't know if you guys have realized, but that's what I do with everything. I suck the joy out of everything that I watch and create and post it on YouTube. And A for why you don't monetize all the things you do. Or like, I guess. And so that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, yeah, Genlock was fun. But where's our, like, you know, we can't get views off of it anymore unless we do it's hate cool. videos about it's it. It's cool. We're going to become, like, a Disney Plus channel soon. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, realistically, look how many views the Miraculous, well, the miraculous Ladybug videos get. We're gonna miraculous Ladybug videos, videos get more views compared to Genlock and Ruby. I wonder if you got, like, think about that for a second. Anyway, I'm just saying, well, also, I can't Ruby make shipping videos anymore. Right I can't make character, even while it was in season, I did the math. I can't make character analysis analysis anymore i can't do anything with the show anymore so it's basically useless to me sorry like you know what i mean like we enjoyed it we had fun but will i go to sleep at night and think about genlock the same way where i may think about like the promised neverland haunting my nightmares or the way i think about miraculous ladybug or ruby like no the answer is no it's just something that falls into the so abyss the like all the anime that i can't remember are like things like global i don't mean keep me up in a bad like, way i just I mean know, like that i think about the things that i continue to think about i watched death note when i was 12 and i still think yeah. about death note to this day in 10 years am i gonna think about genlock i will think, no potentially i will think about genlock the same way i think about Pantheon stalking with garter belt and as a show I remember I, really, I like Pantheon stalking that I really loved that I that think got canceled that may or may not because Genlock could still come back but uh, maybe it didn't end up actually anyway you guys may be places. like Cal I didn't like you in this video and that's fine you don't have to I didn't like you in this video. I don't care I'm totally just this negative. is how I feel okay and All so right. you know what I'm saying we've made so many positive videos about Rooster Teeth and we've tried and to we look at the positive them, and, I and so I'm just so saying I deserve a uh, one video if it is just one to be a little cranky okay <laughs> that's all I'm trying to get at I'm right? gonna make like a like a personalized like let the good times roll t-shirt <laughs> for you and give it to you for Christmas <laughs> oh my god I hope you're prepared for I that. hope instead of Julian it just has miraculously it just has marinette and adrian or adrian doing his thumb gestures because that's that's literally that's just literally all i care about now i don't know what else to tell you guys it's just so before what a mess a mental breakdown because we're all gonna be okay i don't we're believe all still it here and we all still like each other and we all will still continue to do stuff and find media that we enjoy and while Genlock happened, we sure did enjoy it. And at least, at least it all worked out for whatever band did the intro. I know! I posted that on Twitter! Did you see me say that? I was like, the only person that benefited from Genlock was Battle Saints. Oh, uh, boy. All right. Anyway, one more thing I want to end off on is, is that... Um, I texted my mom when she was at work the other day, and I was like, "Mom, is thirteen is is thirteen percent a big like number for a company layoff?" And she was just like, "Well, it depends on how big the company is." And I'm like, "What if the company is like five hundred people?" And she was like, "Thirteen percent of five hundred And she was like, "Oh yeah, that sounds bad." I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what's all that about, Cal? And I was just like. 
<laughs> so yeah, that was a uh, source from my mom that this is uh, this is bad. <laughs> That's so all anyways, I wanted to I really to look say. forward to any new stuff Gray's working on. I really look forward to the Gen Lock. Gray's comic. dead to me. I um, really hope that like we do get a second season of Gen Lock. I hope I, that I can wear my, my that, Gen Lock hoodie as a big dress I hope and just that, sit in it or maybe sleep in it or I something. Hope, like hide your sadness in it. I really wanted to fuck Julian and, Chase, but we all just can't get what we want, everyone. Okay, so. he was a fictional character, so <laughs> even if the show was very successful and went for 18 seasons, you still couldn't bang If there him. was a live action one after the success. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you for watching, and thank you to our wonderful patrons over on Patreon who support the channel. Their names will scroll through now.